This presentation is on dummy variable regression and Pat will be Purdue University Calumet. In a dummy variable regression, the independent variables are referred to as qualitative variables. So here, x1 and x2 and x3 and the rest of them are going to be qualitative variables. And these qualitative variables are also referred to as indicator variables. And so the deal here is while y, the dependent variable, is a quantitative variable, say for example worker productivity, which may be measured in outputs per man hours, is being regressed on one or more independent variables that are qualitative in nature. For example, x1 could be gender. So here we're looking at a worker with a certain level of productivity and that particular worker is male. Well, how do you really quantify male? It's a qualitative variable. Or X1 could be ethnicity. Ethnicity, how do you quantify that? That too is a qualitative variable. Or this could be like in a post office or in some kind of a store where you're looking at sales with respect to as uh, regressing it on method of customer payment and method of payments could be cash or credit so if it is cash or credit how do you really quantify that because those are uh, indicator or qualitative variables as well as size of home big or small that is level of education uh, college or no college something like that so in these cases where the independent variables are qualitative in nature and we're regressing some quantitative variable y on them, we have what's called a dummy variable regression. And what we're going to do is to code the qualitative independent variables using binary values of ones and zeros, as you're going to see in this first example. So here it says, Water Energy Systems provides maintenance service for water filtration systems. To estimate the service time and cost, Wes wishes to predict the repair time necessary for each maintenance request. Repair time is believed to be related to two factors, the number of months since the last maintenance service um, was performed and that's going to be x1 and the other variable is type of repair problem and and so we have this multiple variable model right here where again y is repair time so this is a, obviously y is going to be a quantitative variable and the qualitative variables are going to be the axis however here x1 is number of months so that's quantitative but x2 is type of repair problem as we note here. So and here x2 will take on the value of 1 if the type of repair problem is um, electrical and 0 otherwise. In this case 0 is going to be a mechanical problem. So here mechanical would is referred to as the base level because the only time x2 will take on the value of 1 is if it is an electrical problem as you get to understand better by looking at this data set. So here's a data set. Here are the values of x1, the values of x2, and the values of y. So now let's look at customer number one. For customer number one, there, it took 2.9 hours to fix the problem. Well, this particular device, it was two months ago since it was last maintained. So this is a quantitative variable, but look at x2, the dummy variable. x2 has a value of 1. Why? Because look up here, because the type of repair that's being done here is an electrical one. And so x2 for customer number 1 takes on the value of 1. But customer number 2, notice the repair time here is 3 hours. And as you can see, x2 takes on the value of 0, meaning it's got to be a mechanical problem here not an electrical one and for this customer it was six months ago since the device was last maintained and so the B goes on for the rest of these customers in terms of the repair time the number of months since the last repair was conducted and the type of repair so X2 is going to take on values of ones and zeros 
So we're just going to run a regression like you would do in any other case. You'd regress y on x1 and x2, and here's the output. So here we see, well, first of all, that this regression is statistically significant. F value of 21.357 has a corresponding p-value of nearly zero. So at any conventional level of significance, including 1%, you see that this value is way less than 1%. Therefore, the regression model is significant. Now beyond, beyond that, we look at the explanatory power of the model, and here we can see that about 89% of variation in as you can see here, repair times is explained by the model. So that's pretty decent. And then thirdly, we'll look at the statistical significance of the independent variables. So remember, if I may go back here again, that X1 looks at the number of months since the last repair was done. Going forward again, we find that it is statistically significant because the p-value corresponding to this t-statistic is very much less than 1% and of course also 5%. Also x2 as you can see. So x2 also is statistically significant. So what this is telling us is that the length of time between the last between the time the last repair was done as well as the type of repair are both statistically significant as you can see. In a dummy variable regression the intercept also has an important meaning as we're going to see in the interpretations that I'm about to offer. So everything I've said right now is all summarized right here in this slide. Now continuing we pose a couple of questions that will help us understand more clearly the nature of the results we have. So the first here says show the estimated multiple regression prediction equation. So that's the statement right here. The estimated model, which is also called the prediction equation, will show all will show the regression equation with the parameter estimates substituted in. So you can see this is B0, this is B1, X1, this is B2, X2, right? Their values that is. So now the next one says, what's the mean repair time if the type of repair is mechanical? Remember, if the type of repair is mechanical, that's when x2 takes on the value of 0. So that means if we define the mean repair time, the expectation equation right here, with the uh, using the notations initially, this is a case where x2 is 0. So x2 right here, as you can see, is 0. So 0 times b2 is 0. And so we're left with b0 plus b1x1. And these are the uh, coefficients, the values of the coefficients, as you can see. So this is the statement that responds to this question, the mean repair time. Now then, once we know this mean repair time, we can actually do a forecast, as you see in the next question here. It says, forecast the average repair time for a mechanical problem if it has been five months since there was a maintenance service. So five months, well, x1 is five. So put it in there and solve. And that comes out to be 2.87 hours. So this tells you that the average repair time for a mechanical problem on a device where it's been five months since the last service was carried out would be about 2.87 hours. Now next one here says, now what's the mean repair time if the type of repair is electrical? Well, if it's electrical when x2 is 1, so substituting, that's it right here, B2 times 1 is going to be B2. So this expectation equation, this regression equation right here, simplified will look like this. This is B0. This is, well, you could write this as B1x1 as I've written here and then put B2 after the fact. But usually, mathematically, it's good to put all the numbers next to each other, as you see here in the substitution. So B0 is a number, B2 is a number, and then you write B1, which is a number, times X1. So that way, you can simply add up these two numbers to get 2.1932 plus 
0.3876, which you see here. So this is a neat, nice little mathematical statement. That way, based on the statement, if we are asked, next slide here, to forecast the average repair time for an electrical problem, if it has been five months since there was a maintenance service, all you got to do is put in five for X1. We already know that the other value is B2, which is this. So when you simplify and solve, you'll get 4.13 hours, meaning that it's going to take an average about 4.13 hours to fix an electrical problem if it has been five months since the last maintenance service was done. And this final question here says, now tell us, what's the difference between the average repair time for an electrical repair and the average repair time for a mechanical repair? Well, I've color-coded this. So we're looking at the expected time to fix an electrical problem minus the expected repair time for a mechanical problem. So this is the expectations model, if you like, which is the uh, regression equation for an electrical problem. And green here is the um, regression equation for a mechanical problem. So basically is this minus this. So if we if we take out the brackets, you find that here we have a positive B0 and here a negative B0. So they're going to cancel each other. Likewise, here we have a positive B1x1 and here a negative B1x1. So they're going to strike out each other. And so we're simply left with B2. And B2, if we go back over here to the output, is equal to 1.2627. So I go forward, and that's it right here, 1.2627, meaning that B2 indeed is the difference in repair time between an electrical problem and a mechanical problem, holding the number of months constant, of course. So this is summarized right here. And here's another quick example. It says, suppose you wish to model the mean shipment cost as a function of cargo type. Cargo is going to be a qualitative variable here. And in this example, we're going to assume three levels of cargo type, fragile, semi-fragile, and durable. So this is a regression model. The mean shipment, uh, shipment cost here is a function of cargo type where x1 would take on the value of 1 if it, if it is a fragile cargo, 0 otherwise. That's it right here. x2 will take on the value of 1 if it is a semi-fragile cargo, 0 otherwise. So you might ask, why don't we have x3 to account for durable cargo since there are three levels? Well, keep in mind that if there are three levels, then the base level would have to be a durable cargo, which is when x1 is 0 and x2 is 0. So we really don't need x3. And in fact, in any dummy variable regression, if there are three levels, you need two independent variables. If there are two levels, you need one independent variable because the base variable is going to be where the independent variables are all zeros. So I have not provided the data for this study, but this is the output. And we can see here that this regression is statistically significant given the very low p-value, which is pretty much zero. About 77% of the variation in min shipment cost is accounted for by the use of these two variables in the multiple regression. We can also see here that all of the coefficients right here are statistically significant. Look at their p-values. And unlike in regular multiple regression, where we don't necessarily pay attention to the value of the intercept, in a dummy variable regression, we do pay attention to it because it means something, as I'm about to explain. For example, if it says, what's the mean shipment cost for a fragile cargo? Fragile cargo is when x1 is 1 and x2 is 0. 
So if x1 is 1, that's the 1 right here. And x2 is 0, that's 0. So we're left with simply b1, b0, and b1. So you add these two together, we find that the mean shipment cost here is $13. So as you can see, b0 definitely factors into the estimation. Although you could argue that it also does factor into the estimation and prediction in all multiple regressions, and you're right. But let's keep going. Next one is the mean shipment cost for a semi-fragile cargo, which is where x1 is 0 and x2 is 1. So x1 is 0 here, x2 is 1. So we're going to have b0 plus b2. That's what you see here the numbers substituted and we find that the main shipment cost here is eight dollars and seven cents now here this one says the main shipment cost for a durable cargo the base level as you can see which is where both axes are zeros so as you can see right here that comes out to be the intercept there you go so as you can see the value of the intercept which in this example is three dollars and twenty six cents represents the in this case the expected value of uh, the cost of shipment when the when cargo type is durable which is when we are not carrying a fragile cargo or a semi-fragile cargo so the test of the overall model utility based upon which the F statistic and its corresponding p-value would be used would be expressed the null hypothesis would be expressed like this. So unlike in other multiple regressions, b sub 0 is included in the statement of hypothesis. So here we're saying that there are no cost differentials across the three cargo types, durable, semi-fragile, and fragile.